You're listening to a Pop House Network podcast for developers by developers. Welcome to Java LP episode 66, everyone. Uh, hey there, uh, this is um, our uh, 66th episode of Off Heap, which is bringing you interesting and exciting news because uh, there's a lot that we're having uh, just happening on the Java ecosystem. And I'm here to discuss it all with uh, my partisan crimes. For those who don't know me, my name is Freddy Gime. I'm one of the um, <clears throat> co-hosts here at Off Heap. I am um, a principal engineer at Expedia, uh, Java champion, um, you know, author, speaker, and I'm here with my usual suspects. Hey everybody, Bob Paulin, uh, independent consultant from Chicago, Apache Software Foundation member, uh, CJUG board chair, Java champion, and speaker. Hey everyone, Josh Juno here, Java E, Jakarta E developer and DBA by day. I'm an author and open source developer, contributor by night, and um, a CJUG board member, Java champion, Jakarta E ambassadors member. Uh, hi, everybody. Michael Manella, uh, author, speaker, uh, member of the Spring Engineering Team, uh, curmudgeon at large, Java champion, et cetera. <laughs> All right, and before we dive in, I wanted to thank our sponsor, uh, Datadog. Today's show is sponsored by Datadog, a monitoring and analytics platform that integrates with over 450 technologies, including AWS services, Docker, and Kubernetes. Datadog's platform brings together metrics, traces, and logs in one place, so you can get full visibility into your environment and improve your application performance. With machine learning-based alerts, customizable dashboards, and distributed tracing, Datadog makes it easy to unify disparate data sources so you can troubleshoot faster. Start your free Datadog trial today. Listeners of this podcast will receive a free t-shirt once you install the agent and create one dashboard. Visit javaofheap.com slash Datadog to get started. And again, the URL is javaofheap.com slash Datadog. We thank them for you know, keeping the mics on and the cameras rolling. Uh, and uh, the beer is flowing. So uh, get them a shot, uh, and we thank them for being a sponsor of the podcast. All right, so let's go in. Um, news, right? Events. Wait, what are events? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we do those again? I know. Virtually. I know. Well, virtually. Well, virtually. some of these are actually in person now that I'm in looking through the soon. list. So yeah, they're gonna try. They're gonna try. But but the first one's a legacy one, Michael. Do you want to take that one? Yeah. So spring one uh was uh, uh earlier this month. Um virtual conference, a great turnout, uh great number of sessions. Uh the big announcement right now is that the videos are all available. Uh, online on YouTube. So definitely be sure to check them out. They're a little different this year with regards to how we broke them up. Most of the springy ones you'll find on under the Spring Developer uh, YouTube channel, but anything not directly tied to Spring. So we've got some Kotlin ones, some reactive ones, some uh, platform ones. Those will be under the Tanzu, uh, uh, VMware, VMware Tanzu YouTube channel. So be sure to check in both spots. Mm -hmm. All right. I think the next one is yours, um, Josh. All right. So Eclipse Con is going to be a virtual again this year, of course. And uh, this is an event that I think uh, is definitely worth attending because it covers everything in the Eclipse you know, universe, right? So this is happening October 25th through the 28th. There is going to be, there's at least one community day, I believe. Uh, and then I mean, I was looking through some of the uh, talks and they go anywhere from uh, micro profile to Cardi. Um, there's, let's give me some Kubernetes uh, sessions, you know, uh, IDE sessions, anything you can think of pretty much uh, you'll see at this conference. So well worth attending, especially since it's online and free. Mm, nice. And then the next one on my list, <coughs> Excuse me, cut that one out. Uh, is, next one on my list is Jakarta, uh, Jakarta One, actually. This is going to be the Jakarta One live stream. There are several of these uh, happening throughout the year, but this one that I'm mentioning is happening on December 7th online. This is the USA version. And this uh, conference primarily covers Jakarta, EE, and MicroProfile. It's online, like I said, and free, so go ahead and sign up. 
Nice. And if you're still ready for more conferences the day after, we have an in-person one. So jconf.dev in Chicago, uh, December 8th through the 10th. Um, so right now it's in person, you know, if, if anything changes, uh, you'll be the first to hear it. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're in the Chicagoland area and you're looking, you're itching to go to a conference that's going to have live speakers and, and, uh, three days worth of content, uh, check out jcomp.dev Java cloud. Uh, it's run by the same people that, uh, that bring us, um, dev nexus every year. So experience conference you know, committee and, 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 and organizers. So it's, it's going to be going to be a well-run ship. So yeah. check it out. I got a, I got a paper. Uh, uh, yeah. You're speaking there, aren't you, Freddie? I was speaking there about the hidden costs of microservices. You know, it sounds good at the beginning, but the, the, you got to consider all the aspects of microservices. <laughs> so that's going to be fun. Yeah. We might we might have to do something in person then. We'll we might. Fun. No, I mean yeah. we'll, we'll all be there. It'll be nice and warm in December in Chicago. It'll be great. Oh, yeah. Definitely outside. Warm? <laughs> now that Freddie's adjusted to the the temperate weather of Seattle. Yeah, I will be probably <laughs> dying somewhere, but yes. We'll make Your umbrella it. won't do you a lot of good. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like not in December unless you're trying to fly off like Mary Poppins. <laughs> Actually, you know, like, like I think the worst, the worst part of winter is around February to March for whatever reason. That's what I feel like. I think so. Uh, when when we're yeah. sick of it by then, and, yeah, that's so. what it is. Like, you still have Christmas ahead of you in December, like New Year. Everything is fine, but it's just after that, then everything is just like melt, the, like yeah, black eyes and dirty, and everybody. Once you get to the end of January, it really gets to be uh, long in yeah. the tooth, right? You <laughs> want it to be over with. Yep, time for new season. Yep. And then yeah, Mike the All right, yeah, Michael. Reactive Summit. Yeah, so Reactive Summit, uh, November second and third. It's also virtual. Um, come out and listen to you know the various luminaries in the reactive space. So you know project leads of React, Project Reactor, and R two DBC, and all those. Um, here you know case studies from from people that are doing it uh, actively. And then uh, we also have, for at least one of the keynotes that we've uh, determined, we're going to have Carl Hewitt. Um, he's the person that developed the actor pattern um, in concurrent programming. So uh, definitely check it out. All right. And then um, the next one is um, just an FYI. Uh, actually, no, yeah, the FYI, Oracle Developer Life. Um, you know, they essentially, that was the... Um, Sort of like the sub, not quite substitution this year, but like since there's not going to be an Oracle Code One, they, like Oracle Developer Life did a conference, uh, October 26 to 27. But the, uh, and again, like the other ones, uh, they posted the content for, for free online. So if you're, if you're uh, itching to know what was talked in there, um, you know, we put the link on the videos and uh, go check them out. Hey, yeah, uh, real quick, did anybody? attend the Oracle Developer Live one-day conference on JDK uh, 17 when they released that? I, it was, it was, I, I went to some of it, and it was good, but I'm going to tell you that it did bring a tear to my eye because lots of that same music played that they play when you're in the keynotes at Code 1. And <laughs> I, it brought me back to that place, you know, except uh, it was all on my screen. <laughs> so, yeah, it should be a good one, Oracle Developer Live. Yeah. Uh, the next one I was going to mention was the J Champions Conference. This is happening in January. It's going to be online on January uh, the 20th, the 21st, and then the 24th and 25th. So it's four days. It's all online. There's going to be 24 sessions. They're, they're all Java Champions, and uh, this is a Java Champions-led conference. So uh, you should sign up and attend that one. Wow, we're already into 2022. That's, that's something else. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, and speaking of 2022 and jconf.dev, DevNexus, um, another uh, plan to be in person, April of 2022. Um, I believe the call for participation is still open on that one too. So yep. we probably need to get our uh, uh, our yeah. ducks in a row for that assuming things are going to be good of april, in april of next year that's plenty of time um so hopefully you know things will be will be open and good uh, by then for a big big old conference in atlanta so if you're in the atlanta area and even if you're not 
Um, great destination conference, cheap to travel, cheap to stay, very well run. You get, you know, all, you, you usually got to say, you know, you get all the good speakers from uh, Oracle Code One or Java One there for like a quarter of the price. Right. But now you don't even have those conferences. So this is the place to see them now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, and, and also it's different because like like the they usually had it by the around February sometime. I yep. think they it's later. They push, yeah. Yeah. They push it back just to like uh, make sure that things really open. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably a good idea. It's probably warmer there too. It won't. Yeah, that's going to be nice. It'll actually be warm instead of just like Chicago warm there. So, wow, that was a lot of events. Yeah, things are getting busier. Yeah, like people are chomping at a bit to, to like actually have these conferences. So, <laughs> now well, news. So, I, I just put this one on there because it, I thought it was kind of important to mention that there's a new website that we can all go to as Java developers to learn about Java or to talk about Java and see news. It's called dev.java. And uh, I'm not trying to do a commercial for it or anything. I'm just <laughs> mentioning it uh, uh, because I thought that it was kind of interesting. It looks like this one is Oracle led, uh, led by the, the Java development team at Oracle. So you could go and check it out. And I think, I think it kind of is similar to fuj.io if anyone has visited that site, that one seems more community-based and lots of good blog posts uh, weekly there, you know, good content. So check that one out too. Yeah, I see. And just looking at the abouts on Fuji, you've got JFrog Pyra, you've got Hazelcast, Gluon, Datadog, Datastax, Azul, like you've got people from all over the ecosystem. Yep. Dev.java, definitely, I mean, Looks like a bunch of tutorials. They got download links there. Um, they do have a community link. It looks like DevRel stuff. Oh, yeah. and, and, and Jug stuff and Java Champion stuff. Um, maybe this is just going to become the new, you know, <laughs> Java the new Java. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, interesting to see that, that, that there's so much kind of getting into this space. I mean, there, there's a number of really good Java tutorials out there. It's, it's, it's interesting to see the kind of stewards of Java kind of starting to play in this space too. Um, which is, which is interesting because like, it is, I, I think that one of the, the issues there that, 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 that Java has is like, you know, it is, it is like, if you go to Python or you go to the other languages, right. There's one place where you sort of get into the, the ecosystem. Right. And it has tutorials, it has everything, and that's where you start. Like, um, like same when you do with Go, and some of that is is just a matter of of one company owns the thing, so they just create the whole thing around it. Like Java, because of its, um, you know, nature of being open source, because there are different versions and all that, it has been hard to sort of like corral everybody to one place, and that's why you know you. You have everything from Spring, right, to like. But that's like not the way. Tutorials. That's not. That's not that's not the way it always was, though. I mean, it was Java.net. Java.net. Yeah, I mean, you had Java.net, and, and you know, really, when Oracle bought Sun, you know, they abandoned the Java community. You know, they they had the Yahoo toolbar. They started. They required you to pay to use Java in production. Like from a community open source perspective, they kind of stepped away from Java. Like they can't, don't get me wrong; they've been good stewards from a technical perspective. Like releases and, and engineering and resources there, but mm -hmm. they dumped all the dev advocates. They, every, all the community specific stuff, they really stepped away from. And it, in my opinion, it's good to see some of it coming back. Um, yeah, no. Like, uh, that, that's, it's really, they're, they're finally realizing that, hey, you know, to, to really, to really, you know, do this right, we have to be involved in the community as well. They've been hiring dev advocates back again. And like, so, They've, they've been making a bit of a turnaround. It's, it's a good thing as of late, but you know when they bought it and, and decided to that they couldn't make easy money off of Java and they get in the start. You know, like I said, I think they made some community mistakes. That it's good to see them kind of fixing. Yeah, there was a rough couple of years. I agree, and and I think it's really picked up and it's gotten a lot better in the recent uh, days here. Yeah. So yeah. No, now. Thank there's... you, Oracle. <laughs> there's at least two to. A big entry points, now, or at least they tried to become the portals of Java, right? Fuji, more of the community-driven, and and uh, 
what is dev.java as as how did they got the dot java that's because of the island right they have their own domain you know almost had to right because that's the that's the owner of that suffix yeah, yeah I guess. most of those uh national top level domains are willing to pay to play so if it works well for your company here's an interesting question. wait oracle has money <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how does that play with the sort of like Java copyright enforcement? Because I can create my .java or whatever I want .java. What domains are copyrightable? There was a there's a, there's a, there's a TV, Supreme Court case about this, is, this recently. This is TLD, right? Like I understand yeah. domains are copyrightable, but can you copyright the .com part of a domain? No. No. So can you copyright the .java part of a domain? No. So I don't believe so. So I remember there was, a, like I said, I remember there was a Supreme Court case that was recently about this because somebody wanted to copyright hotels. The domain hotel hotel or hotels dot com, um, and it, there was a lawsuit about it. And it went to the U.S. Supreme Court. I remember <laughs> even listening to the oral arguments. I actually don't remember what the actual uh, decision was. I thought it was that they weren't copyrightable, um, but I don't. I don't remember off the top of my head. Wow. I mean, are you sure it was hotels.com? I thought it was. Um, that, that that was the domain they talked about at least. Mm. Um, that would make maybe, sense. Maybe just as an example. It's kind of a generic, you know, type of a domain, right? Right. That, and that that was the argument they were making is is by uh, if you could copyright hotels.com, you could but you could preclude people from using luxuryhotels.com or <laughs> boutiquehotels.com, like you know all the different variations of that you would preclude people from doing. You can't copyright language, which is essentially what this is. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the oral arguments were like, well, yeah, but you can limit people, people from having the same phone number. Like you can't, they're, they're like, they're trying to draw analogies. And it was just, it was a very interesting set of oral arguments. So you cannot that. copyright a number. <laughs> Remember that one? No, yeah, you, you can't. I want to copyright pie. <laughs> yeah, what are all the digits? <laughs> I'll wait. Only, only, up certain, only up to a certain number. That's, that's it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just looking at just to get back to the, the two sites. I'm just kind of, you know, browsing them side by side. I mean, you know, the, the good thing about both of these sites is a lot of intro level material. It's a lot of introductory material on how to get involved in the ecosystem. Like, you know, all of these folks that are putting this content out there, they want people using the JDK. If you're already a master at using the JDK, if you want to contribute to the JDK, they provide steps on, you know, how to start getting involved in those things. So, I mean, you know, it looks like just a very approachable content around, you know, community involvement, intro material, getting started, installing it, like, you know, the really basic things that often we forget about. So it's good to see, it's good to see this content. It is interesting because they do seem like almost competing concerns in a way, um, which feels a little bit weird, but like at the same time, it's coming from different places and it will just be interesting to see how they evolve and what, you know, they fill in the space. I like dark mode, uh, Fuji Dio allows you to do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's nice. <laughs> uh, the one thing though that I do think is really neat with Dev Java that I'll be interested to see to see happen in the future here is the um, embedded web UI where you can start to work with Java in the web browser. There, that's not working yet, but it will be interesting <laughs> to see it once it is. I feel like every other language has that, right? Where you just start typing things into a into a browser and say run. Yeah, definitely Kotlin you know, does, right? Yeah. I know that. And what was really quick, to back up, I, I found the, the case I was talking about, and it wasn't copyrighted, it was trademark, actually. Oh. Ah. So a big difference. Um, it yeah. was, and the example was booking.com. It was a trademark. Oh, no, that was, should be uh, familiar to you, uh, Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was saying I don't care. Like, yeah. Go the case away. was the U.S. Uh, Patent and Trademark Office versus booking.com. Um, and the, the uh, court did rule that uh, you could trademark a domain name. Oh wow! Yeah. So booking.com, but basically by slapping.com on the end, you're you're removing. You create a new word. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Interesting. 
Oh, All right. Well, shall we move on? on? Yes. Sure. Moving on. Um, so, yeah, who's got the uh, we've got the 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 buy or the the quarterly IDE updates mentioned <laughs> in here, too. So, I mean, we don't have Eclipse on here, so I'm just going to start it with that. Yep. I got a new Eclipse download. <laughs> it's September. Everybody's on the same cycle for IDEs. <laughs> Nothing really changed. It still works. I'm happy. Well, then you said like it, it, it did it force you or no it, the, it doesn't like, force like i have both a mac and 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 windows and, and i think that depending on how you install it you can get the automatic updates but like my mac where i kind of i don't know anything about mac so i probably just did it wrong um <laughs> i installed it and it's still on like the march release because that's when i started at this particular client um but my my pc i've got it where you know every three months you know on the day i log in i start eclipse and it says hey you've got an update download the update restarts the ide You're done. and you know it used to be like watch it crash you know 10 years ago and now they've you know gotten more practice at it so it's 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 been really smooth the last couple of years no, but it's uh, it's it's baseline to use Java 11 now. Right? It is 11 now. That yeah. <laughs> was funny when we were talking. So I mean, we had our episode yesterday with Pubhouse with Stuart Marks. It was like that was that was the trigger for me to upgrade from eight to 11 on my desktop to make the <laughs> the, the defaults different. <laughs> um, so it's like, well, the IDE needs it. It's time. Yeah, yeah. I've kind of on that same topic. Have uh, have you ever tried Eclipse Thea? You know, I, I actually have played around with it, but played around is as far as I've taken that because that's the, that's the uh, web-based one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think so. uh, the pre kind of installed thing that you go through where it just, you know, Hey, this is the set of instructions that work. I was able to get some things to work, but the cool thing about that was, yeah, I want to start tweaking some things. So whenever I took the branch releases, I had a hell of a time, just like, hacking on it. So I, I kind of was like, yeah, this is what I was really kind of excited about this, about, you know, hacking and maybe embedding in a website or something like that, not being able to do that kind of scared me away from it. Maybe it's better now. I haven't looked at it in some time, but um, I have looked at it. Cool. Yeah, I, just I looked at it as well. I, I, um, I was looking at it because uh, I was curious about being able to develop on, uh, on my iPad. Yeah. Um, and it just did not work on my iPad. So mm -hmm. the interface didn't work out well. Um, I'm actually curious now with what we, regards to web-based IDs, GitHub's got one. Um, yeah. And that actually supposedly, I haven't tried it yet because you have to be, use it through the uh, GitHub Enterprise account, I believe. Um, but that supposedly does work through an iPad. So hmm. I, I have not tried it yet, but I want to. Nice. So I was just was going to mention the IntelliJ updates. Uh, there are, of course, are IntelliJ updates available now. And this is 2021.2. And if you go to their site, the page almost seems endless scrolling of all the new enhancements that they've added. Uh, so I'm not going to name them all for sure, but there are. Is, is, fi is fixing indexing one of them? I think so. Yep. I think that's one of them. Good. Actions on save. Um, editor uh, enhancements. There's improved markdown support. User experience. Uh, quite a few things there. Uh, UI improved UI responsiveness. Maybe that's the one I saw, uh, Michael. So I'm not 100% sure on the uh, indexing. Make, make room for action during indexing. So always, while the ID oh, no, no, no. is indexing a project, you can run debugging. So it'll let you do other things while it's while it is indexing. Okay. You see, and it has automatic download of shared indexes for new Spring Boot projects. So that's that's kind of nice. Mm. Yeah. So essentially, okay. it creates a pre-index and you just download it, so it doesn't have to index anything Spring. Wow, that that's was, cool. cool. Brilliant, that, that's perfect. They don't need to do anything else to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I like IntelliJ. That's, it looks that's like they've got a new uh, JavaFX project wizard, with, which looks I cool. know, you know, it's, it's one of those weird parts where I needed to do like, a, I was doing some, some like JavaFX things um, probably like eight months ago. Yeah. And it's better than what he was, but it was mm -hmm. still hard, like because you have to sort of download the the command line, install it. It's not just like adding a palm and then you're done. It's like yeah. uh, it, it's a lot of like ceremony to get it done. Now they say like with their 
the wizard is just like two clicks and you have it running. I'm like, that, that's awesome. Sweet. Yeah. That's the thing that really got me into uh, Java was Swing. Actually, I, I fell in love oh, with Swing. Yeah. It's the old uh, flame. <laughs> and and uh, Java effects is uh, kind of there. It's it's uh, but it's kind of parallel to Swing. You know, I guess it's the new version of it, but um, it's a little different. But I do I, I do it. like it. I do like. I it. had to learn AWT to pass the cert. Oh my! <laughs> God. That is yeah okay. okay the programming cert, like half of it was AWT. Yeah, stuff. Uh, okay, boomer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, not that bad. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, AWT, like, like yeah, that's old. That's all. Well, I learned Java when you actually had to explain to people Java one dot two really means Java two. <laughs> yeah. You actually had to tell people, no, no, really, it's Java two. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just looking at my bookshelves to see if I have any of those books still. Oh. Well, I know I've got the Java one dot five Tiger book. I know that, but I don't know if I've got <laughs> Java one dot two. Um, build tools, uh, profiler updates, uh, lots of updates. So just go ahead and get that thing and take mm -hmm. a look if you're an IntelliJ user. Uh, oh yeah, the one big thing I wanted to say about the IntelliJ update is that they do have a plugin now. It's either a plugin or it's a um, uh, it's embedded into uh, IDE, but it allows you to convert from Java E to Jakarta E. So that's uh, uh, oh, it'll nice. automatically convert nice. the namespace from Java X to Jakarta dot you know star. I don't know if it does anything with the libraries though. So uh, in other words, seeing it's if your libraries are compatible. Here. Okay, but that's that's half of the battle there though. Cool. So. Yeah, for sure. And then I wanted to also mention that NetBeans 12.5 was released uh, recently. This is another good release for NetBeans users. Lots of Java enhancements, Gradle uh, enhancements. Uh, there's some Micronaut support enhancements there. Um, I know I did the Jakarta EE9 Glassfish 6 support, so I put that in there. Uh, lots of VS Code. Um, enhancements uh, that you know allow you to work with VS Code. So a lot of good things in uh, NetBeans 12.5. And 12.6 is underway already. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. All right, next one is yours, Michael. Cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the things that was announced at Spring 1 was uh, the baselines for Spring Framework 6. So. Uh, the next year, you'll have Spring Framework 6, Spring Boot 3, and basically all the majors of, of everybody that, that in the portfolio um, will drop uh, over the course of next year. Um, so the big news is for a baseline, uh, Java, or, um, Spring Framework 6 is going to require uh, Java 17 Ooh. and Jakarta EE 9 or above. Um, so uh, we'll be going. So if you're on, if you're running Spring apps, if you're still running on 8, which <laughs> Spring 5x, it goes all the way back to eight. Um, you know, if you want to go to six, you're gonna to have to make the jump all the way to 17. Um, so be thinking about that now. I think that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's um we think that it's you know based on the support timelines um that that are laid out based on um uh the fact that we're not releasing it this year. Um, you know, if we release six this year, eh, 17 felt a little aggressive, um, but the fact that we'll be doing it next year, you know, now 17 will have been out for just about a year by the time we actually release six. So it should be enough time for everybody to kind of figure out their story. Um, Start upgrading now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it seems like the critical mass is, is finally moving off of eight. I mean, there's a number of open source libraries that from, you know, the discussion list to the actual, you know, teams have, have been moving off of eight. Um, you know, most of it's been moving up to 11 as is, is what I've seen has been more popular than moving direct to 17. But like, you know, big, big frameworks like Apache Camel that has a ton of dependencies. I mean, they, they're reading the writing on the wall that a lot of these libraries are dropping support for eight in lieu of, of 11 and 17. So they're just kind of moving with the rest of the crowd there. It's like, if you're, if you're that entangled into the ecosystem, you're going to be upgrading from eight is right. kind of uh, where things are going. We actually, in the blog post that, um, uh, that uh, Jurgen put out, uh, he actually 
comments on the um, the fact that we skipped kind of skipped over eleven as a baseline, mm -hmm. and the main reasons there were um, was the LTS support. Uh, aspect like 17 is going to be supported longer. It's going to mm -hmm. be supported longer than 11. So we really view 11 as more of a transitional mm -hmm. release than a true normal, if you will, LTS. Um, ah. And so, uh, I mean, it was the first LTS post module system, right? So it was. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, it started that, in nine, but the, the, the actual LTS release was 11. Was so, 11. right. Right. So, um, 17 just feels like the right thing. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a ton of new features again, check out the, the pub house episode where we're talking with Stuart Marks, you know, it's not out yet. I'm sure it will be soon Yeah, uh, going through a lot of the new Jeps that are, that are included in there, but uh, yeah. a lot of new toys to play with from things from the garbage collectors to the language, like syntax. Um, and, yeah. Uh, a lot of Amber stuff is in there. Yeah. Some deprecated stuff too. So yeah. <laughs> Applet but is deprecated finally. <laughs> the, the kind of the big thing that's that's super interesting about 17 is how we how much we talked about it being the kind of the launching pad for a lot of the next phases of Valhalla, the next phases of Panama. Like they figured out, I mean, the, the beauty of 17 is they figured out how to just release things on time and how to cut the train off and like how to be like, yeah, we're going to change this little thing right now. This doesn't make sense, but it will, you know, it's like a good, it's like a good story and you're just getting kind of bits of it at the beginning, but you know, it's going to get good, you know, it's, in a it's, few more releases. Yeah. You, you, Cause you can see it like, like it's, it's like little features, right? Like, like on its own, it's like not a lot, but like once you start seeing how they come together, like, you know, as you see like the big sort of like the deep, what they call like the, the, the deep sort of like timeline that they have, it's like, holy cow, they're actually making not so much as fixing, but as enhancing in a right way, the language, instead of just trying to do it all in one fell swoop. So it's, it's fun. It's fun. 17 is, is a fun release to be in. And that just sets the stage for like what comes next. So. Yeah. And, and they're looking to change the cadence, I guess, is the, just the kind of the follow in to the next news item. Like, so uh, who's looked into that? Cause I just started looking at this probably the other day, like, and it's, they're going to be releasing more frequently. Right. Yep. Right. Right. So that is, that is our discussion topic, right? Like, um, like, um, so, uh, so uh, big news, 17 was released is an LTS release, which means that, that a lot of like, there's like, for example, where I'm from, that's, that's uh, a thing that we will upgrade to, right? Like, you know, it's, it's stable, it's long-term, it sort of makes sense. It's going to be support for all the other libraries that we, we sort of use or the consumers, you know, like, you know, you're, you're, your well, the release scanners and all these other things that we have, they we know that they're going to have an LTS support for 17. So, so you know, as we jump into it, as part of that that <laughs> that Oracle announcement, one of the things that they did change is that uh, the LTS are usually expected to be every three years because that that was sort of like the cadence that they have technically with some delays on like five, six, and seven. That's sort of like what, what they were doing. So they said, okay, we're gonna, now that we're gonna do in the uh, sort of like six months cadence, every three years of that six month cadence, we'll do the LTS, right? And now um, Oracle is, is essentially saying, look, um, we're not gonna do three year LTS. We're gonna try to reduce that to two year LTS. And uh, so now like after 17, what is what will be the- uh... The new LTS will be 21. The next one. Yeah, which was supposed to be 23, right? Right. Yeah. So so in the previous schedule, 23 was going to be the LTS. Now we get it sort of like a year early on 21. And um, it's interesting because it's an interesting play, right? Like on one hand, like for, for me, it's nice because that means I can upgrade to an LTS uh, quicker. Uh, but on the other hand, which is the interesting part, is that this also plays on the maintainability of previous releases, because Oracle has a long-standing policy where um, I think what did it say? Like two LTSs, two, two. If there's, you know, there's going to maintain 
two LTS versions. And if there's a third one, that's the one that sort of like drops off. So uh, I think it was the, the free, right? Aren't they? They're giving Oracle uh, JDK free for two LTSs. Well, yeah, now we're dipping into the other thing they changed, which was the license. Yeah, no, that's fine. Gone. I mean, they're they're intertwined <laughs> in a way. When you think about it, you have to almost like as a developer, you have to think about it together when you're thinking strategy, right? So mm-hmm. um, those dip in. And I mean, you know, the prior license to start with where we started with this was you that we will provide security patches to the current LTS only, right? And it, or the current release for six months. Wasn't that where we start? Like, so once the next non-LTS comes out, it's like, hey, yeah, it's an LTS, but no, you're going to have to pay to get the release, you know, mm-hmm. the security releases for this. Um, well, you, you had to pay to use it in production anyways. And you had to pay to use it in production. Yeah. So, right. I mean, you know, they had this entire model built upon having frequent releases where if you're going to keep up to date, great. Okay, you're keeping up to date on the free stuff and getting the security patches. But if you want to stay, you got to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's, so, and there was, there's like two or three parts to that, right? Like the first one was like they did change the licensing model from eight, right? Like, so on eight, I think it was, it's still like, um, you can use it, whatever. There was, there was not a lot of encumbrance, but uh, but I think it's starting in, in, in nine, there was this, this idea. I that- felt like they changed in mid eight. Weren't there like update releases of eight that was pre this change and some that were post? I almost feel like eight is like split in a weird way. I, it was like they say they were not. One of the things they they, they did is they stop um, they stop patching eight. Yeah. Um, so 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 what happened was that 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 uh, the license of eight didn't change, but they stopped having security updates on Oracle J. And then let, let's be very clear. We're Maybe that was it. Oracle JDK. Like right. the one that you can go to <laughs> dev.java and download, they'll point you to Oracle JDK. That, that's the first choice, right? Um, Is it now? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I guess that's a change in the ecosystem though. Like, and I mean, and this is the disruption is now you have a number of different companies that have distributions and yes. those distributions, I don't know if they're more successful than they anticipated or not, but there's a lot of those distributions that are non Oracle distributions that are kind of my go-tos whenever I'm doing this in Docker containers, whenever I'm testing with clients, the Oracle distribution at this point is not the first distribution I reach for at any of my clients. No. And that is, and I don't, does, and does anything that in this license change that? I, so, not how I read it, not a lawyer, yeah, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, no, so, much, no, there's, there's too much change. risk, right? I mean, even, no, no. even it, it, like, it's still foggy enough. I mean, the Java champions email list was yeah. it flat out said, if you're, if you're not a lawyer, don't use the Oracle JDK. That's okay. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. The emails. Decision, right? that, that's what they say. I right. Mean, like, but, but, but there the, the are a couple of changes because they have like the non, non commercial something or the other. It, it is, it is actually weird. You when can't you, redistribute for money. I think it's the, it's yeah. basically one of the statesmen, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm with Michael on this. I get nervous anytime I see a new license. Like there are certain licenses. If I see BSD, if I if I see MIT, if I see Apache, you understand those. I know how this works. Anytime a new license come up, it's like it's like Ooh. yeah, hold on. Like, and it's not like Oracle know. has the uh, that has a track record of having the most uh, end user friendly licensing agreements. They have a lot of lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> they're good at this game. I assume they're better than me. <laughs> so, so, so the the they're, they're, the big change. The, there were a couple of big changes, right? Like the first one was uh, okay. So it's called the NFTC license, the Oracle No Fee Terms and Conditions. And apparently, there's a sunset on this license, meaning like um, like it's technically you can use it in production until 2024. Like there, it's, is that it's like so, a Mayan end of the world thing? Like what? That's kind of a random date. <laughs> no, it's oh, it's an LTS release. Ah, there you go. <laughs> no, no, that's where. Like, now that <laughs> releases are on time, we can plan ahead. <laughs> yeah, no. So, so, so apparently, like, so, so the the license it's supposed to like. Yeah, you're right. There is a no distribution clause in there. Like for money, for you money, can distribute yeah. it for free. 
Yeah. And, but but there is like, and, and I think the, the idea is that, that they say like this one you could use in production until, but it, it has a specific date where you say like after this date, you, you're not supposed to use it anymore. And, or, or you're supposed to get a license. That, that was sort of like what, what, what they're saying. So, so it, it's, and it's not, it feels like, like Oracle is, and again, one of the things is like, if you- Well, see, that's just for Java 17, right? So I'm correct. just, I'm just Googling through the, or searching through the license and it looks like it's based, it's a per release thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then, as an end user, that makes me feel so much better. I got to re-review <laughs> this stuff every time I go to upgrade Java. Hey, yeah, lawyers bill the... hourly, Michael. So I mean, this just makes sense. <laughs> yeah, for the lawyers, but not for the, not for the product manager or product yeah. manager that's got to cut a, cut a lawyer check every time they want to do an upgrade project. You know, and, and so, so so that is one of the things, right? Like like um, like if you think about how how and, and, and there was an interesting discussion that I had, like sort of like post show with with Stuart. If if you look at the Oracle where Oracle started, right? Like where, where Sun started, where the idea was that there was sort of like a free version of things and there was, you, you sort of pay for the premium, right? Like you pay for, for the support, you pay for Java Flight Recorder, you pay for the Java Instant Time, all these other things. Yeah. That was sort of like the model that both Sun and then later Oracle sort of like adopted um, for, 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 the, for Java. And the thing is that when they they start trying to dabble into the open source, the open source community works differently, right? Like like um, like they they like Bob said, there's like the standard licenses. You know, you either pick up Apache license, you either pick up like you know GPL license, and and uh, when you try to pick something in the middle, like you know like Elastic did or Mongo did, like the community reacts, right? Like it's like, what are you doing? You know, like you. you it's not that you don't can't do that, but the community does not like it, and people get afraid because well, again, and they fork. <laughs> I mean, you know, look what happened with Open Search and Elastic. Like there is a new line on it now. I mean, you know, I and I don't expect that to happen necessarily with the JDK. I actually, for me, it's just more like just murkiness where I don't know where this license is going. More than like I right. feel like there's a they're going to pull the rug out from under me. It's just why. Um, because I mean, you know, they're also starting to cut like an open JDK. So they figured out, Hey, everybody else is just cutting builds of open JDK. We're going to start doing that too. So we're going to get in this game. Um, <laughs> that's under, but that's back under GNU with class path exception. I mean, it's not like that's, that's an old license that I know I am and like, understand. understand that. Yeah. yeah. So, so that is, it, it, it is crazy because like, I think. So, so, so the prediction, right? Like, like, like the prediction is, I think that eventually most like, well, I don't know if it's most likely, but I think eventually maybe that this is the way that Oracle sort of like slide into one of the, just saying like, okay, we're just going to go GPO with class path for the Oracle product, you know? And, and I think this is sort of like, it, it feels that it's like they, they got developers on one side, like, like Oracle uh, or the Oracle leads on one side and they got the lawyers on the other. And they were trying to figure out like, oh, where's the compromise? You know, can we do GPL? No, we cannot do GPL. Well, I don't know how you do GPL if you're going to offer open core things. I mean, the one thing with GPL is it's infectious, right? So if I'm going to pile on custom features, I have to open source those features once I start distributing stuff. Well, like you... with Apache and other things, you know, what, we, what we're essentially talking about when you're just adding things on is open core. Like, hey, this is all open source and this is what I'm giving in for free. But, you know, you want flight recorder, you want something else. We're going to add some things and you got to pay for that stuff. That's not licensed as Apache. And with Apache, you can mix and match like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. GNU, even with the class path exception, is not that kind to, you know, things that get baked into the source code. So, so, that, so that is the part, right? Like, like the, the technically, as far as I know, because they own the source, they had the choice of releasing on their different licenses. Yes, right? yeah, but I mean, I think that's why you're not, you're gonna release it under a different license than, than GUNU with class path exception for the proprietary things. Like the Oracle stuff, 
Like if you're going to pay, you know, they used to have to pay for what, like coherence that they would bake into the JDK. I mean, there was, there's a number of products that they used to bake in yeah, um, yeah. that you would end up paying for outside of support. So you're not just paying for, you know, getting the new TLS version, you're paying for features that don't exist. If you're going to have that source code, you know, and make it proprietary and then ship it with the open source, you know, GNU stuff, like you gotta have a different license than GNU. Like you're touch the source code is touching, it's being binded together and, and you're going to end up having to open source the stuff you're making money off of. Yeah. And that's, but that's, again, that, I am not a lawyer, but that is how I understand how Goonie works. So, so the interesting part is like, um, that is the model that they started with, right? Like, like, well, yeah, right. Cause it was like the Oracle commercial features that, you know, like the, the Oracle, like on, on six or seven was releases so you can use it, whatever you want, but if you wanted to use the commercial features, which was kind of sort of embedded, you pay for them, right? I agree that it's probably not, it was not the GNU license, it was the Oracle lawyery license, but it right. but, but but it was this part you can use for free. If you want extra features, you have to pay more, right? Isn't there but an I don't example think like mission control. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go back to that. Or or if they are going back to that, it's they're doing it in a very weird runaway. It does feel that's why it's like I don't I don't know the end game, and I think a lot of people are just like they're speculating on it, and that's where a lot of that list conversation comes from. Yep, and that's why we we that that's what we're pundits, and we're we're speculating too. Like you know, I I honestly don't see the end game. I mean, like almost everything that came out of this was was super positive, like accelerating the release schedule so that you're coming every two years, everybody, I have not talked to a person that dislikes the train release schedule. I think that is universally adored by the developer community. Um, there, there, is splitting, there, there, there are some splitting hairs, I, I think, and a lot of it is is uh, the burden of, of, of maintainers, right? Um, because technically, right, if, if, if you're supposed to to go from LTS to LTS, and you want your libraries to run on the latest LTS, that does create that burden on on the maintainers of saying like, oh, I need to check, make sure that the next LTS is ready. Now I have to do that every two years instead of three. No, years. but I mean at the same and, time they're doing pre-releases. Like the like that, eleven was painful, but since then it hasn't been. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Sorry. I'll say it's not so much that you know from a library maintenance perspective yeah it's a pain in the butt we have to maintain multiple versions blah 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 but that's not even it it's our customers it's our users how often are enterprises actually upgrading their job jdk and that a lot of people when we they talk about oh we want faster releases so we can get features out faster yeah but there's a cost to doing an upgrade there's a business cost that most maintainers don't acknowledge or at least a lot, a lot of maintainers I've, I've interacted with don't acknowledge the upgrade cost of, I just kicked out a new release and I'm expecting my users to upgrade that. And so every time we hit the community with, whether it be, you know, the JDK or any of the, you know, 15,000 other libraries that enterprises use, every one of those upgrades has a cost. Mm -hmm. It's taking developers away from adding business value to the applications that they're building. It's tech and debt. so, pardon? It's tech debt, like technological debt. You have to pay, like, mm. it, you're creating not exactly, not, not, not always, right? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, not always. Um, you know, it's, it, it's tech debt is something that I, the developer, made a compromise on as part of, uh, uh, as part of developing my application. No, but th th this is, this is the maintainer putting, putting more work on my, more work on my, more work on my plate. No, but like, like, but it's not the maintainer, it's the enterprise, right? I mean, it's they're the ones doing the upgrade and doing, you know, a lot of the testing, well, I, I, right? I'm, I'm saying as, a, as an enterprise developer. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm, yeah, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah. So, maintaining yeah. of, of my code within my company's ecosystem. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I get that. And I guess, you know, when I look at it, they're balancing it out. Like, so, you know, with, with 17, you get, Two new low latency garbage collectors. There's there's certain things that you get. 17's worth upgrading for. Yeah, no, it's, I, worth, it's, yeah, it's, okay. it's worth paying that pay, paying that price. Right. It's when we talk about shortening that window. It's when we talk about like 
you know, and most of these upgrades, especially when we talk about LTS stuff and major versions, you know, this isn't just upgrading. This isn't, you know, Joe user upgrading their browser on, on their, on their desktop, right? There's, there's a lot of process involved in getting this stuff upgraded into production, yeah. you know, through, through QA, all the yeah. enterprise bureaucracy, getting it into production. And every so time you make one of those, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's not, like I said, it's, there's a cost to this. And the, the, my fear is that by except by making the gap short too short, you actually encourage the wrong behavior. You encourage people to be like, "Yeah, I'm just it's just too fast, so we're just gonna blow it off it. until it's a until it's really painful." You know, there there's there's a balance there that I think, you know, the ecosystem has to find. Personally, I, I liked the three years. I we'll see what if two years is is too. Short or not, I don't know, but you know, the community will, will tell, right? Um, the market will tell, but I just, no, and that's, I think my, that's my biggest concern when I see this kind of change. No, and I, and I think there is, there is almost like, like sort of like, like treadmill where, where you do run out of space. Like, like there is a point where either you're going to start paying for support because, you know, you're two LTSs in got and, it. and yeah. so, 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 so there you, you got a definite, like, Okay, I gotta make a decision what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be upgrading or I'm gonna be paying. And then then that decision used to be, you know, six years. Now it's gonna be four. Right. So so that's it's it's interesting. Um it, it all depends, I guess, on how much of a pain it is, right? Like 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 for me, is I'm excited because I love to play with the new features, and I think that go like again, the only the only things that I can do is go from LTS to LTS just because of the way like my, you know, like my, you know, where I work is a structure. Um, I don't, I don't even think though that it's, that it's um, how painful it is. I think it's almost the opposite. Convince me that it's worth the work. You know, when you think about just the historical Java versions, right? There are some that everybody upgraded to you know, Java six, Java eight. There are some that were dead on arrival. Nobody upgraded to them. seven, nine yeah. you know like, like nobody used those java versions because yeah. the pain well, out the pain outweighed the benefit so that's the other thing is like for these frequent upgrades is there going to be enough in each one to to warrant but honestly though the just difference? in an enterprise especially do the managers uh, care what's in actually the release of java they don't well, care about the features well, they care about pain so that's 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 where where you got it right like yeah like it's it's at some point in time the question is is if they have an oracle contract and they already cover for forever they probably don't it's like why are you yeah. wasting time doing this right yeah. but but if you are like uh like you know in, in a place where you the, you sort of like go with the free or sort of like uh don't have a, a support contract then yes you you either you're going to start pay or you have to create regardless of the features and I think, and I think most of the time, the enterprises, depending upon the bobs of the world and you know the developers, to tell them, you know, we need to upgrade you to this new release so that we can put these features in your application or whatever it may be. Um, and the situation that's going on with Jakarta EE right now, um, you want to get off of eight so you can get onto these newer, uh, you know. Uh, application service that run Jakarta E9.1, right? Um, so it makes sense to do the upgrade. And so, you know, I, I kind of agree. I'm, I'm on the fence with it. Um, I like from the developer's perspective, like Bob's saying, to be in a point where we can get more uh, features quicker. Um, but then again, I can see on the other side, uh, like Michael's saying, you know, who would have upgraded to, you know, uh, JDK, 11 and then you know three releases later you know here and jdk whatever uh 14 upgraded i mean how many features were in that split is it really worth doing the upgrade from a developer's perspective you know are they going to convince their managers this is something we have to go to yeah proprietary products are always going to have their supported releases and that means some of that can help drive this equation yeah. but i mean you know to your point 
you know, wh- why, why was seven skipped so much? It's, it's really, I don't think it had so much to do with what was in seven. It's that most people were not deciding to go from six to seven, but from five to seven. And it was like, okay, I don't really need generics. That's, that seems like a lot of work, but then eight came around. It's like, okay, I got a new garbage collector. I've got Dreams. lambdas. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's worth it. So, I mean, to your, to your point, you do need drivers to, to force people to, to make people make that decision. So the, the, what's going to determine it is, can I, yeah. Can I get enough in, in two years to convince people to do that? And whether that question can be, I mean, so far comparing 11 to 17, yeah, 17 has got some stuff I want. Yeah. Um, So I'm going to pay the price for that. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 like I said, it's a stick and a carrot, right? It, the stick is the new features. Are there enough there to, to, to track people? Yeah. So the carrot, you know, gets people that's to go. The carrot. It, it, right. That's the carrot. If you choose, if, if you choose not to chase the, the, yeah, the carrot though, there's a stick right behind it saying you're going to pay otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, and it's, so, so, so the thing that makes me like, um, or the thing that will worry me, right? Like, um, like there is, there is, in some corners of, of, of our, our software, right? Like we still use like things like Wisdom or XML or Fast Info Set or, or, or these things. And that was, that was one of the concerns is like the libraries that, that were created, right? That were created for six, that were created for maybe for eight. And uh, they're technically now abandoned. And there is some of the alternatives out there are, there might be alternatives, but they are, it almost requires you either re like reshuffling all that stuff that you did, re-encoding it with new libraries, doing all that. And that is and that is something that's coming, especially because now like before, you know, and I think this is something that is changing. Before Java used to be very uh backwards compatible. They're still trying to do that, but but it's slowly having sort of like cranking up the ratchet on <laughs> deprecation, right? Like there's like illegal, like illegal access for reflection is something that is 17 is like you can't decide anymore. It's it's illegal now. Like, like it's 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 baked into that particular JDK. Uh, so so before yeah. I could like still upgrade and safely ignore the warnings, now is now is gonna be and 17 is going to hurt. For these particular libraries, where I have no recourse but either to patch the libraries or or move to something that's still supported that nobody wants to create because nobody wants to create a new whistle library. Um, well, and we even know. talked about potential fixes to that. Is you know, can can you make things open, right? Can it it, it just they've moved the needle to make it harder. I think in some regards to, to do that, where it used to be just a single command line, it's like, well, yeah, ignore illegal access or, or whatever it was. Right, I think right. that's, yeah. you know, was the easy thing to do to just say, you know what, I, I really want this to work like it does in Java 8. Mm. Um, that That's now harder. You have to use the conventions that they created to open access to those core libraries and the things that these older libraries just assumed was there. You know, you've got libraries that thought Java EE was still baked into JDK. Well, I can add those as dependencies. So, I mean, I, you know, so far there has been workarounds to a lot of those things, but yeah, I think there is going to become a point it's, it's getting where things, things are removed and not maintained and they don't work anymore. Yeah. Um, and those are rewrites. <laughs> I mean, it's plain and simple. Yeah. That's gonna if they're, if they're, if they're so painful, that people don't want to rewrite them, people will upgrade the libraries. I mean, that, you know, the, the beauty of the open source ecosystem is if it is that much, if it is that bad to upgrade from SOAP to REST, somebody is going to upgrade CXF to the, you know, to the, to the latest versions of Java to make it work. It is a one time investment, and other people are going to piggyback on that. Um, I mean, there, there's an economy here, so it's gonna it's gonna work out. I'm not too nervous. We should mention. Um, the, sorry. It has to be popular, right? For it does. Know. No, if you're doing the little yeah. niche thing, though, like, <laughs> hey, I'm using Closure, and nobody cares about Closure, like, yeah, yeah you're screwed. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're if you're following main, and, and again, this is Java we're talking about. This is enterprise. This is this is about standards. If you're following 
standards and doing things that a lot of other people are doing and you're doing it for the right reasons because it's like, well, you know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We're just trying to get our stuff to work. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah, I, I agree. It's some of it is, is we got into a corner because we, we made a bad bet five years ago on what, what we thought it was going to be popular. And um, it's, you know, it's like, all right, pay the piper. We got to just like rewrite it and, yeah. and move on. But those are the things now that I have almost like, no, I, before it was still like a deferred choice. Now it's almost like it's getting to the point where, nope, there's no choice. You just got to do it. So we should mention that there is a document that Martin Verberg and other Java champions have contributed to. It's called Java is still, th- uh, Java is still free. It's on version 3.0.0. This is a, I want to say, 27 page document. <laughs> Um, and, and it's not all, um, you know, the lawyers speak or anything. This is pretty clear, clearly stated um, what you can get for free, what you should be using uh, if you're not planning to pay, uh, what you can do if you want to pay. You know, it really explains it well. And um, several of those pages are the names of the Java champion list. So um, it's not actually that long to read. So it's it's a good read. Um, if it's not available yet, it will be soon. And it'll be on the Java Champion sites, I believe. Yeah, with how much misinformation there is out there about a lot of these changes, I, I know I've sent it to, to several clients to kind of clear up misconceptions that have had. And, it's, and it is very well written and vetted mm-hmm. by a number of different perspectives. So it's, it's, it is worth having in your, in your favorites. And they've kept it up to date, which is even more amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no. And it's, uh, we'll put it on the show notes, but it's a very, it's a very good read. And uh, essentially the thing to remember, right? Like um, there are many distributions of, of the JDK, right? Like, you know, we've been talking about Oracle because that's the sort of like the big one. Um, but there is, you know, there is like, like, like Bob says, there's a Zool distributions, there's, uh, well, adopt often JDK now is called itself adoption, uh, adoptium, adoptive. Like, yep. Yeah, it's it's actually uh, funny you bring up the, the multiple versions because uh, I was just talking to somebody the other day, and uh, uh, if you're on a Mac, you might use SDK man to manage your mm-hmm. Java installs. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened recently, but if I go to list the the different Java versions, and I'll have to scroll. Like, yeah, it, it is exploded. Uh, <laughs> the the yeah. different version number of. Uh, distributions um, before there were a lot, but it was all on one page. It's, it's, there's a lot there. So you got I, options. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and the thing is that the good thing is like, um, like uh, it's not like all of these are essentially equivalent, meaning like uh, they're not like, like Linux forks. They're quote unquote, technically uh, private builds, I guess. Um, but, but essentially almost guarantee that any of them will work with the code that you have. Like, like, you know, unless you're doing something extremely esoteric that requires a specific sort of like, like, you know, JDK undocumented features, um, they all run the same. Essentially, they, they are based off the same code base uh, with small tweaks here and there, and they just all work. So, um, uh, Josh, it's been a long time since I've looked at that doc. Is that the one that also calls out which ones uh, pay for and pass at the TCK formally and which ones don't? I think so. Yes. Okay. I believe yeah, it So does. That, that's also so going to, uh, along with what uh, Freddie was saying, you know, if if you're sticking to Java as in the, the standard uh, APIs that are, you know, things that are, you're, are supposed to be supported, um, at a minimum, anything that passes the TCK, you should be able to run with. Um, I mean, they're literally paying to prove that, 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 there's, that they support that stuff, so. Yeah, and and then just a clarification. I'm uh, taking a different document for uh for oh and this is for Open JDK 17. Yeah, um, this is going to be updated uh, at least through April 22 by Oracle, and then it, there's a TBD after that. So yeah, I guess that's when when it transitions to the open source community to keep the patching updates. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I remember like when we were discussing this, you know, years ago, you know, how active would the community be, you know, in the patching process and the update process. And and I have yet to be 
I'm, I'm still amazed at how much participation yes. there is in that from all of the other JDK vendors, from other you know interested parties. Like it wasn't the whole cataclysm that was expected. It's like, oh my God, Oracle's going to stop giving updates after you know the next release. Like eight's been good. 11 has been good as long as it seems like the pattern has been as long as you're sticking to LTSs, you're going to be fine. Um, I'm in yeah. that dock right now. And uh, speaking of, you know, I can't get over how long some of these support <laughs> dates are. Yeah. Like, uh, public updates, uh, Bellsoft's Liberica, uh, <laughs> Java 8 until at least 2030. <laughs> There's another nine years on JDK eight. <laughs> it's like gonna have kids out of college by then. Movie. It's like I can't even yourself, fathom that. Seriously, I'll be able to teach my daughter Java on, on his, his <laughs> eight on, on on code I wrote back we'll when I was still be when support. Was, seriously, <laughs> oh, that is funny. You run in production. <laughs> I mean, and it looks like a, you know a lot of um, organizations are doing that. Even the Zool. Zulu has uh, eight LTS uh, support till 2030. Mm -hmm. eight, eight's going to be the one that never dies. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the new what? That's the new six? Yep. Yep. I guess so. The new Java 1.4. <laughs> no, nobody uses that. I, I hope. <laughs> what you're saying about, uh, to go to, uh, I think it was Michael's comment earlier about JDK 11, what you do see in the document is that most of the dates there are uh, ending support in 2024 for 11. So really, you know, it would be to your advantage if you have not upgraded from eight yet to actually go to 17, because that thing will be, will be supported for quite a while. 2024 is just around the corner. Yeah, yep. And if you're on, and to your point, if you're on 11, you should probably already start making your plans. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's and 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 that, and that is that is one of the things. Like there are there are definitely free alternatives, um, you know. And and again, all these things come come at a you know like it's it's community lead community. A lot of it is community maintained, uh, or 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 essentially the ecosystem decided to step in and 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 still doing the patching, still doing the maintenance, still doing the giving it free love, right? And and um, like Bob said, is it's admirable that it works as well as it does, knock on wood, they keep doing this. Uh, but yeah, you should not be scared. You know, I, we're talking specifically sometimes about one particular license, one particular other license, but Java as the as an enterprise system and a language feature, uh, like I said, language carrier, there are so many choices that you are fine picking it as something to program on. So, and our favorite language, right? <laughs> yep. It's what pays the bills. <laughs> you get to be a job developer right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think I think that's 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 all what we have. I don't know if there's any other comments about the LTS that you folks have. Right. If if you have not know what's coming on 17, do listen, like Bob said, to the Java Pub House where we have Stuart Marks just going and talking about all the goodies that that um, that uh, 17 is bringing in. And it's it's going to be fun. Like I'm I actually looking, I wonder when Growl VM is going to support 17. Um, that's and a great that question. Sense, yeah. Yeah, because uh, that's for the, they're probably working furiously to try to get it. I didn't see it on the, like last time I visited, it wasn't not there. It was not there yet. Maybe it's there. I would now. assume. I would assume soon, given that at least for from Spring's perspective, the native story from end to end is you know a key uh, a key piece of our uh, Spring Framework six and boot three story. So, mm -hmm. um, and if we're I mean, this point in sixteen, it's kind of gotta work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm assuming that it'll be you know that we should be should be on the way if not already there. Yeah, I mean they are supporting sixteen, so they, they must be close. Because like again, incremental from sixteen to seven. I guess they're like if they support the the preview features of sixteen, then more much much easier to transition to seventeen. Then, and then that is another question for for Spring. Can you run Spring on seventeen? Like like we know Spring six is going to be based uh, baseline on on seventeen. What about like uh, if I want to take Spring five and oh, 
Yeah, we are all the whole portfolio already works in 17. Okay, so. <laughs> yep, you, there's, always, there's nothing just, stopping you from doing it now. Yep. All right. And like Bob said, 17 has two uh, two new garbage collectors, which I know what I'm going to be playing next week with. So this is fun. It's a fun time to be a developer. All right. Well, with that, I think that's all we have for this episode of Off Heap. All right. This is Freddie signing off. Bob signing off. Josh signing off. Michael signing off. Be sure to, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you're checking us out via uh, Twitter, please be sure to uh, share and uh, follow us on Twitter at all.